Okay, with this piece, the Y-axis motor mount, um, you'll notice that there's a nut here. There's an insert, nut insert. And we're going to be putting it, this, is, this nut insert is here so it doesn't, the actual nut wouldn't conflict with an idler sprocket. And the way we put this on is in this orientation so you don't see the nut insert on this side and the uh, screw will be pulling against the nut inside. So let's go ahead and put that on. Okay, so we're going to put the Y-axis motor on the Y-axis motor mount. And on this screw, remember we had a uh, nut insert here. We need a one inch screw so um, the screw won't go all the way through and interfere with the idler sprocket. And then the other screws will be either one and a quarter or one and a half. Both of them will work. Both sizes will work. Alright, you don't, don't um, tighten it up yet until you get a couple other screws to make it a little bit stable. Okay. And we still have a little bit of adjustment, but we probably don't even need that on this one because this is going to be holding a sprocket. Now we're going to put the remaining screws in, and then we'll put the nuts on the other side. So we'll use a washer on each of these screws that doesn't, that doesn't have a nut insert, and we'll use a nut. on the bottom here. And tighten it as tight as you can now since it's in there. Then another washer. The washer and the last nuts. Okay. Tighten the rest of them up. Now we can put the, the sprocket on the y-axis motor shaft. Okay, we're going to put the drive sprocket on the y-axis. See there are two set screws here. We're going to put it on in this orientation. We're going to line it up as close uh, to the, um, the idler sprocket as possible. So let's get it on the shaft here. And that looks like it's about lined up. Then just take a Allen wrench and tighten it and tighten it as much as possible. You might need a, to get some torque on this Allen wrench. Okay, that's good. Um, now that's on, now we, now we can put on the, the chain for the Y-axis. Okay, for the, the roller chain installation, the roller chain is gonna go over the sprocket, over the idler sprocket, on the top, and go under the idler sprocket, and go over the drive sprocket, and then under the drive sprocket to meet the other side. To be able to hold the, the chain in place, we're going to be using a, an eye bolt, just like the other machines, and, and a, a hose clamp to, to tighten the chain around this, this piece here. So first we have to put this in. Let it go out a little bit here. You can see at the furthest most point, you probably want to make it around this location. You want to try to get the you want to try to get the chain to be as close to this point as possible so you'll have as much space to work with just for this side. The other side will be a little bit better. So insert the hose clamp and add the chain through the loop, through the eye, and tighten this. Okay. And on this side you want to tighten it up all the way so you'll have as much space as possible on this side. Okay, you, you know, and as stated earlier, we can we can adjust this up and down to to match our alignment on the side here. Now let's do the same thing to the other side. And this is the high side. We'll do the same thing as we did before. And this one will probably be the adjustable side. So you can tighten it by uh, when it's when it's finally secured. You can tighten it just by tightening this this nut here. First insert the hose clamp and then... Okay. You want to try to pull this as tight as possible when you've gotten the eye bolt as far in as this. Okay. This is not going anywhere. We can tighten it up a little bit just to check our alignment so we can 
we can move our 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 mounts here. Okay, so it looks like I need to go up on this side. That looks good. And as you can see also, this piece sticks out quite a bit. And once you've gotten it pretty much set, you can cut this off with um, either a Dremel or, or a hacksaw. On this side, it looks like I need to go... That looks good. Go all the way up. All right, this is secure. Now you can tighten this and tension it as much as you want. Just doing it by hand should be, should provide enough tension in the chain. Okay. For the x-axis motor installation, we're going to be putting it here, but as you can see, there's really no space for the um, tightening these set screws once the shaft is located here. So we're going to have to do that first. All right, so put your motor in position. Make sure that the protruding area of the motor is set in place. And we're going to, we're just going to place this on the shaft just to see where it should be located to align it with the, the, um, the idler sprockets below. That looks like it's aligned. Another thing to look out for is making sure that the, the wire is either at the, yeah, the wire is actually at the top or the bottom. Um, if you put it on the side, it's possible that you can, um, the wires can interfere with, uh, the, the housing or the uh, the structure. Okay, so so this looks like it's aligned right there. So I'm going to take it out and then so we're trying to keep the sprocket in place. I'll just tighten it, loosely tighten it, and then just so it won't move. And now it can be completely tightened. You want to get this as tight as possible because these can slip. It's good that they have two set screws, so it makes it a better a, a better connection. But the shaft of these motors are hardened, so it's it can get a little slippery. So just tighten them as tight as you can, and uh, this should be fine. So when mounting the the motor, want to try to get as many screws in just to keep it up. We're going to use a one eighth or uh, eight number number eight screw at one and a half or one and a quarter inches in length, most likely one and a quarter. And once you get one in, it should be able to hold in. And the trickiest one is gonna be at the bottom and the top and the back. So it's gonna take a little bit of effort to put in. You're probably saying, well, Patrick, why didn't you design it in a way that it would be easily mounted? What happens when you're designing? Now the one at the bottom, your hand in upside down works. Let gravity help you get this in. And just tighten up the nuts. Okay, when putting on the roller chain for the x-axis, we're going to start from here. Underneath this idler, idler sprocket, over the drive sprocket, under this dri idler sprocket, and then it's going to end up to this location. We can go ahead and put in the, the eye bolts on the two ends. Okay, and oh, I did this one backwards. And we can go ahead and put in one side of the chain. Put the the pipe clamp on first. And put it in a way that you can get to the the actual nut and or the bolt. And loop it over. And you don't you don't want to put too much slack here because you want to make sure that you're not wasting too much. And then and tighten it. Tighten it up. I'm gonna get a little more slack for myself here. Okay. Okay, that's sturdy. And then we're gonna route it underneath the idler sprocket. 
And then we're going to go all the way to the side. First, put on the hose clamp. And then you want to try to get it as tight as possible. It doesn't have to be that tight because you can still tighten it on this other end. And now just And now you can simply hand tighten it till it's pretty taut. Bring it as taut as you can with your hand. It should move a little bit, but not that much. I mean, it should deflect about, let's say, half of an inch or so. Um, you can also tighten it even more if you wanted to, but you're not going to get any, um, or you're going to have very, very little backlash too. Um, really very, you're going to have very, very little backlash with even this kind of tension. So now that we have the, the X axis motor installed, we can go ahead and put on our rod. Our rod will be extending from the back of the X motor shaft and we'll have a coupling here to couple these two and at the far end we'll have a bearing and another sprocket on the other side. We're going to use a coupling that looks like this. It has a quarter inch um, inside diameter on both sides or a quarter inch bore on both sides. We'll slide it onto the, the motor. Put it on until you can see the motor shaft go about halfway through and then put on the shaft. Slide that back out. Let's put on the shaft first just to make sure it can go all the way in. Okay. Put on the motor. Okay. Now you should still have quite a bit of it sticking out on this end here. Now we're ready to tighten the, the coupling. An Allen wrench is used to tighten this. But you don't want to tighten it too tight, just pretty snugly. With a pretty snug fit, it should not move. And if you move the gantry, you'll see that the, the coupling turns and this shaft will also turn. The bearing slides onto this location here. And once we've got the bearing, bearing in, this, by the way, this um, the bearing seat is very tight, so you may have to use a hammer or something to get the bearing inside. Um, and also the rod is exactly the same diameter. There's a tiny bit of tolerance there, uh, but not much. And you may have to do a little bit of sanding around the, the rod to get the, um, the bearing to fit over it. Or you can heat up the bearing and expand the uh, inside diameter. So once the bearing is in, we can put on the, the sprocket. Just line up the sprocket with the idler sprockets. If I can get the sprocket on there. Okay. And on this one, it looks like I'm going to have to go all the way in. As with the y-axis, just tighten this as much as possible. Move the gantry to, to access the other, the other set screw. Now this is on. Now one thing you might notice that if this is too far out that you can either switch switch this direction if you have enough um, available rod here and you can tighten it on the other end or you can you can use washers behind the idler sprockets to bring those out either way will be fine so in this configuration I noticed that this is a little bit too far out for for my idler idler sprockets and Instead of putting more um, uh, washers behind the side of the sprocket, I'm just going to flip this around. Since I have enough available, and you will too, actually, um, you'll have enough um, rod to be able to do this. Just reverse it and find the, the spot that is the same distance away from the wood. And you can just go ahead and tighten it in at that location. So now the sprocket is on, we can go ahead and put the chain. Uh, the roller chain will be done the same way the other side was.
it would be good to loosen these two so this can be free. We want to make sure that this is free so the chain can allow the gantry to be the gant the, can allow the gantry to be um, um, not uh, turned in any direction or racked in any direction. And once we get the the roller chain on the other side and it's tight, then we can go ahead and tighten this. These we can go ahead and tighten the the screws for the coupling, which will keep the gantry from racking in this direction. Thank you.